This video outlines the basic steps in collimating a, a Cassegrain telescope. Um, you can do it simply by pointing the telescope at a, at a small light source. You can even use a, um, a, a flashlight mounted on, the, on, a, on a fence at night time. You'd, you'd want to be at least 50 yards away from it. My backyard's too small to do that, but I'm on a bit of a hill so I can look down at the uh, street below, which is probably about two miles away, and I just um, use one of the street lights down there which works very, very well. It is a, to, to collimate a telescope, it is rather a delicate procedure. If you don't feel confident to do it yourself, then you probably should leave it and, and get someone else to do it. And there's um, many other videos available on YouTube which are far better than, than mine, so it's a good idea to watch a few others and um, uh, read up on it, and um, if you've got the telescope manual, uh, the more information you get and, the, and uh, the, the better you'll be at, be at doing it. To start off with, you're going to need a, a distant light source to um, adjust the telescope with. And What I've done here the last few times is, um, I'm, I'm quite lucky, I'm on a, on a hill and I've um, aimed a telescope at a street light which is about two miles away. And then what you need to do, so you find the street light in the, in the finder scope and then uh, sent Central the centralise the street light in the in the viewfinder, and then you want to turn the focusing knob to turn the pinpoint of light into something that uh, looks like a like a donut. Once you've defocused the image in the viewfinder, if your telescope produces an image like this, then the collimation is is good, and there's um, no need for you to go any further. So you can simply um, stop. Your your telescope is perfectly collimated. If, however, the image in the viewfinder of your telescope is like this and the hole in the donut is not central, then you are in need of a collimation adjustment. These are the three collimation adjustment screws here. And uh, the central one is, is the fastening screw that holds the secondary mirror in position. So we mustn't turn this one when we're um, doing the collimation. But uh, you just need to check what type of screws your telescope uses. This one uses a small flat blade screwdriver, but yours may have um, an, an Allen key, and if that's the case, you just need to jet check if it's metric or imperial. And uh, so it's just a matter of selecting the right right tool for these fasteners. But very important to only make very small adjustments in the order of an eighth of a turn. So it's only very um, very small amount of adjustments needed. Coming round to the front of the telescope. What you'll be wanting to do is to use the, the the three adjustment screws on the secondary mirror to bring to bring the collimation back in back into adjustment again. So all you all you basically do is is you'd be loosening one screw an eighth of a turn and then tightening the other two an eighth of a turn. But um, it's important to to do very very small uh, movements and, and even an eighth of a turn will make quite a a large difference. Um, the other thing you can do to work out where or which, in which direction the image is off is to introduce an obstacle in front of the telescope and then you can see on, on the image where, where the, which, which way is, is, is the greater error. There's a video which explains this far better than I can and I'll put the link in below. Once you've got the light source defocused in the viewfinder it's very important to use both the, the right ascension and declination slow motion control knobs to centralize the image in the eyepiece and every time you do a, a small adjustment on the secondary mirror always return to the RA and declination knobs to make sure that the image is always re-centralized in the eyepiece. And by slow steady adjustments you can turn a, a, an image like this into this and then eventually back to this which is a, a perfectly uh, aligned telescope.